everybody, this is Purdue Matt, and this is episode 2 of Minecraft Dad's Build. And uh, I'm continuing the tour of my Minecraft world. My only Minecraft world, as a matter of fact. I, I do have another world that I use for testing uh, ideas. You know, blowing things up and trying to make traps or contraptions and uh, craft different things. That's not in this world, but uh, really those are the only two meaningful worlds that I have. My, my test world and my game world, which we're currently in. And we're at the next stop along the tour. Uh, and this is where now... Uh, let me bring up our map here. And uh, as you can see, we started off at the pumpkin patch. The pumpkin patch was where I started my game, and the pumpkin patch consists of my original first night hut, a small island home that I played from for uh, a little while, and Outpost Alpha, which was basically my, my mine and the beginnings of what I thought would be... Uh, a, a series of mine, and I, I decided to move away from that area because uh, there were just too many mobs, and I was at the time I was kind of paranoid of mobs, and there I quickly discovered there was, there was really no good place for me to mine there because every time I would start a mine, I would hit a cavern or end up in a ravine, underground ravine, and so it was. It was clear to me it would be difficult for me to get resources there, and, and so I wanted to move on and start over, so to speak. And so rather than starting a new map altogether, I wanted to keep Outpost Alpha. I wanted to keep the Pumpkin Patch. I simply just moved somewhere else, and I moved here. And this is the lighthouse. Uh, when I left, I... Um, I'll bring the map up again. <laughs> When I left the pumpkin patch, I went along this shoreline. I just followed it around. I hugged the shore uh, until, and my goal was to simply go along the shore until I found a place that I liked. Uh, at the time, I thought I wanted to build a lighthouse. I liked the idea of a lighthouse. And so I found a suitable island and uh, began building. And as you can see behind me, there are some extreme hills in the area. Um, we are at the very top of the lighthouse. And I'll show you the rest in a minute. Behind me is our train station. That came much later. We'll get to the train station. And I, But first, let me take you on a tour of the lighthouse world. The lighthouse portion of my world, that is. So here we go. In, in my own, back to my own point of view, uh, we're still in creative mode so I can fly around. And here is the lighthouse. This was with, constructed completely in uh, survival mode with the exception of I later came back in creative mode and added the redstone lamps and swapped out some wood in the tower for gold, diamond, and iron blocks. Uh, but other than that, the rest of it is original. Oh, yes, and I added the um, emerald blocks in creative mode as well. I think I swapped out um, stone bricks for the uh, uh, emerald blocks. But the rest of this is creative mode uh, build. The lamps here, the redstone lamps on the bridge, and here are also up, upgraded later in creative mode. And this is what I call the boardwalk. This is a completely man-made island that I built for my purposes. I didn't want to have to establish my farm over here because uh, there really wasn't a good place for it with all the hills and stuff. So, And I wanted a rather large farm, so I actually made one made an island on my own, again completely in survival mode. This I spent a lot of time here. This is probably in real world time. I probably spent uh, 
maybe three or four months constructing this just in the evenings when I was bored and had wanted something to do and uh, the kids were in bed I would come and play my world now by this time <clears throat> by this time GeoGuy sorry I slipped up there and said my kids real names uh, and by this time GeoGuy had his own copy of Minecraft and he was playing and we were playing together uh, but at, at night when when uh, everybody was asleep I found that I really liked Minecraft, so I kept playing. And this is what I built. This was, I was very proud of this. So let's take you on a tour. This is actually a built, the lighthouse is built on a small island. Uh, here's a screen capture of what the island looks like. Uh, I recreated the world using the original seed uh, so that I could show you what uh, the original was. So it was just a little sandy island and if I fly over here, you can kind of see how the, the dirt, everything comes up. So it is an island off here. So continuing the theme of island builds, I, I like the idea of having a place I could retreat so as not to have to deal with mobs at night. Okay, so then um, it took quite a while to build all the way up. Of course, it started off as a small building, and I added a second story, and then added, just kept building up and up and up and up. I had a plan, kind of a vague plan in my mind as I was building this. I ended up getting a uh, nether portal, so I was able to get some nether brick and nether fences to add on to it and uh, upgrade as we went. But let's take you on a tour. So this is the main story, and this is where I lived on this floor for quite a while. Uh, this used, this room used to be lined with uh, furnaces and crafting benches, and I had a bed down here. And then I built this second story here. This was originally intended to be uh, kind of my fighting platform. But after I lit the island up, I, I realized that uh, not many mobs came out this way, so I never really use this much. I'd come up here and snipe at skeletons on the um, mainland over there every once in a while, but I never really had to defend my 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 home from mobs. Uh, if any mobs did find themselves in the water, they would usually just kind of splash around and not paying any attention to me. Every once in a while one would make it to the island and that would they were usually pretty quick to deal with. And then we get up into the tower level so this is the first floor of the tower and as we go up each tower and I think you if you've been watching if you've been paying attention in dad and kids play minecraft I like the idea of sunlight being able to get down into things so the sub floors in this tower there and there are five I think it took maybe four or five floors on the way to the top level um, the floors are all made of glass so on this floor I've got a brewing stand for potions and I think if we look in here yeah we've got some uh, basic potions here potion ingredients now these potions these ingredients uh, were all collected in survival mode I tried to keep and this will sound strange perhaps but I tried to keep my creative mode inventories and my caches and my storage areas separate from storage areas that I make in creative mode. And I'll show you an example, a prime example of that. You can see here, uh, if, this, if I had done this in creative mode there would be 64 of everything and I would probably have all, all the rare stuff. Uh, the hardest thing to get are these gas tiers and I probably spent an entire evening hunting ghasts one day just to get um, you know, maybe 24 gas tiers. So these are precious in creative mode. Gas tiers and magma creams and blaze rods are pr precious commodities. In uh, yeah, in in survival mode. I didn't mean to say in creative. Did I say creative mode? Well, if I did, I didn't mean to. If in survival mode, these are pr pr precious commodities. Uh, whereas in survival mode, you just go into your inventory editor and grab them so it's it's, it's easier to take them for granted uh, the rest of these floors are more or less empty I haven't really thought of a, 
a uh, good thing to do with them. If you if you have any suggestions as to what I could add to these floors, uh, feel free to post them in the comment section. I'd be I'd love to hear them. Uh, and then here's the top floor of the tower, leading to a balcony up here. And this is probably this room here in this balcony walkway. It's probably my favorite place in the entire map. Um, if I were, if this were a real place, I'd have chairs all along here and a barbecue. Uh, I would spend almost all of my time up here, just looking out over the sea. I, I love, love, love this area because it's got everything. It's got access to the ocean. Uh, there's an island over there. I love islands in Minecraft bigger islands, the, the little tiny islands that you find in the oceans are kind of annoying sometimes, but I like big islands. That's Shepherd Island over there, and we'll visit that later. Uh, we've got some hills, extreme hills over there with, that have some character to them. Uh, there's a big cavern, just a, a, a gaping maw of a cavern. That was not done, that just was uh, created like that, that I did not have that was not carved out with dynamite or anything. It just that's the way it was rendered by the map, the seed, um, and so on. So this area is the most built up of of everything. Um, so let me give you a little bit of the lineage of of, of this, and it kind of give you a timeline. The lighthouse was built first, so everything you see else around here came later, much later. Um, I built. Uh, first story, second story, third story, and built all the way up to the kind of the crow's nest. I call this the crow's nest of my lighthouse. And the crow's nest is my favorite part of the entire map. That is my home in this map. And, and the lighthouse is now what I consider to be the headquarters. Everything revolves about around the lighthouse. This is the center of my world, and I will always consider this my home base, so to speak. Everything else is a, is an outpost. Even my original spawn point, um, the uh, pumpkin patch, I consider that an outpost now because this is my real home. This is where I really started to hit my stride in my Minecraft evolution. So this was built up first, and then I built a dock later, this dock came much later. The red redstone lamps here were upgraded. These were originally just glowstone lamps with wooden posts. I admit I did upgrade these in creative mode. Um, the, the posts looked more like this but with uh, wooden, po wooden uh, fence posts instead of uh, uh, nether brick or nether, nether post. I've got a little bit of a dock here. I would eventually like to create a uh, automated gate that would be lowered with sticky pistons so because sometimes the boats tend to wander off I've got chests here full of boats um, so let's go inside so I showed you the tower now let's go down you might have noticed the trap doors when I walked in well those lead down to the mine shaft so let's take a look at the mine shaft so of course one of my reasons why I wanted to come into the island was because I could go up as well as down. So I did. So this goes all the way down to almost bedrock. So I started digging my mine shaft here and quickly hit a cavern. Dropped, literally dropped down. I think I died when I dropped down into it because there was a creeper down here. But I was digging and I didn't fall in. I wasn't digging straight down, but I jumped down to try to take a look around and quickly got killed. Um, and so what I ended up doing, this cavern room, it wasn't all that big. There was, the cavern went kind of down this direction. And I ended up making that my nether portal area down there. Uh, so I cleaned it up down here. I opened it up a little bit. And this kind of became my storage area. So here I, I kind of moved my, this was originally, this access here was originally intended to be my mine shaft. 
but when I hit the cavern, I moved my mine shaft over a little bit, so I could use this air, this whole area as kind of a storage uh, crafting area. So this is the main storage room right here. Uh, get in there, and then you can see it's got a little bit of everything. Everything's labeled iron, and you can see I was quite successful. Again, everything in this room, if you open the chests, was gathered in survival mode. Uh, nothing in, in creative mode is allowed in this room. I do try to keep them separate. So if you open these, these are all legitimately acquired, so to speak, through survival mode, just mining. Okay, and then let's take you down to another portal room. Oh, and this is the special chest for gathering um, supplies to go fight the Ender Dragon. So if I ever make this map available, just so you know, I've never actually defeated the, the Ender Dragon in this map. And, I've, and that's actually was a deliberate decision. I wanted to make, if I made copies of this map, I wanted to make sure that anybody who got a copy of it could, had the option of going to fight the Ender Dragon. Uh, I just didn't, I thought it would be a shame. If I downloaded a map and wanted, wanted to explore and wanted to fight the Ender Dragon, uh, I, I think would think it would be a shame if I would arrive at the at the end only to find that the Ender Dragon had already been defeated and the return portal was there. Uh, this is some more storage that I carved out down here. Uh, mostly, it's cobblestone. For some reason, I I kept all my <laughs> from my mind. I kept everything, including all the cobblestone. So you can see here, I've got cobblestone coming out of my ears. But this is the Ender Portal where I'm very proud of the way this turned out. So you can see here, and this was done all in uh, survival mode, except for the heads. The heads were added in creative mode later on, just because I thought they were cool. And I wanted an excuse to use the heads when the new version of Minecraft that allowed it um, as decorative blocks. But I created, I put together all of this with um, in, in survival mode. Uh, that's kind of a cool effect, isn't it, with the flames behind the nether portal? There's nether brick fire going back there. And you, there's glass there, so you can't actually accidentally walk through the nether portal. Whoa, ah, darn it. I didn't mean to actually go into the nether. Well, we're here. I might as well show you. <laughs> so because I put my nether portal below gr ground, uh, my nether portal was, in my world, was spawned below ground. So it took a lot of trial and error. You can see, if you wander around in here, you'll see several tunnels why, where I was trying to find the way out and ended up hitting lava instead. The way out is actually uh, down this way. So I've got a, a nether wart farm going here. But if we walk over here, and I've got it marked with torches. But if you follow this tunnel, that kind of takes you up into more wide open areas in the nether. Uh, everything else is underground. I actually, one time I, I got s surprised on my way back from the nether. Uh, even though it's cramped in here, uh, at one time a ghast actually spawned in here and uh, made me jump about six feet <laughs> straight out of my chair. When I turned the corner and there was a gas there blowing fire, you know, throwing fireballs at me, um, and I wasn't expecting it. So let's go back. We'll, 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 I'll take you on a more thorough tour of the Nether later. But I'm very proud of this Nether portal room. So let's head back up. The nice thing about creative mode is that you can fly. So this was the, turned out to be the kennel. And unfortunately, I had to I had to uh, kill all my dogs. I had about a dozen dogs, and I was in this world once with uh, Geo Guy, and he accidentally hit me with his pick when he was mining with me, and all my dogs attacked him. So I had to, had no choice but to put them all down, and I haven't gotten around to replacing them yet. Uh, if I do replace them, I will be replacing them in survival mode. 
So this was all built first, um, and then I decided I wanted to build a farm, a floating farm, and this is the boardwalk that resulted as, as a part of that. This took me forever to build. This was all done in survival mode. I uh, went out and got all the all the brick, all the clay for the bricks, uh, all the wood for the boardwalk, um, everything. Except the, the only things that I added later in creative were again the redstone lamps and the um, uh, that's actually about it. Oh, I did. I constructed another building at the end here in in creative mode. So uh, if we take a quick tour along here, so this is the farm portion. Uh, this is the boardwalk storage. So this is basically where all the food is. And again, these are all legitimately acquired in survival. But basically, everything you need to maintain your farm is in here, including your the tree farm. So we've got wheat, pumpkins, and melons, carrots and potatoes, uh, sugar cane, so all your basic growable staples. And then agricultural here. Uh, all the animals, with the exception of the mushrooms, were brought in legitimately through uh, survival. I, in a moment of weakness, I did spawn a couple mushrooms in here in creative mode. I will admit that. Uh, started growing some trees. Got a um, silk touch shovel, and so was able to grow grass in here. Again, all done in survival. And then I have a tree farm here as well with glowstone around each, the bases of each tree spot, port, I don't know what you'd call those, are made of the actual wood, so that's birch surrounding the tree there, and over here is oak surrounding the tree. We've got some um, fir trees and some jungle trees, again, all, all brought in, in in survival mode. The animals are all all have free range of the tree farm, so they're nice, happy, free range critters. So, going organic here on the boardwalk. And this is my enchantment room here. Again, keeping with the theme of, of allowing natural light in, there's a glass ceiling. Nothing too fancy. But again, this, this part was done in survival mode. Now, this part over here. Uh, before at, before I started decided to move on from the boardwalk. Oh, and then here's a swimming uh, diving board for a nice swim and a way to get back up. So after a hot day working the fields, you can cool off, and take a nice quick dip in the ocean. Um, now, when I built this, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with this area, so I, I this was actually empty. And this is this portion of the boardwalk is the only portion, this building here, that was done in creative mode. Uh, and I'll show you, as far as big structures are concerned. And this goes all the way down to the ocean floor. So this is an underwater um, spa slash workshop. So if you look at the sign, fall down. It's the workshops and spa. So if we go in, close the door behind us. First level, and we've got our water elevator here. It takes you down to the workshop. Now, let me show you the difference between a survival mode workshop and a creative mode workshop. So here you've got all your heads and everything. You can tell this was made in create. It's got all the hallmarks of a creative mode build. You've got your rare blocks up there as decoration, all brought in in creative. Uh, if you look at the chests, <coughs> 64 of everything. So here in our, we've got all the basic supplies you would need to craft just about anything in Minecraft here. Uh, some enchanted books. 
Uh, armor, including armor that's impossible to get in survival. I guess, I guess zombies will now drop chain armor, but I've, I've I've never actually been successful in getting one to do so. And then an empty chest here. Uh, nice fireplace again, all underwater. I can sh I can give you guys a how-to on how to do this. Basically, what you do is you build. In creative mode, you, you go down, you put gl build your glass walls, and of course when you build your glass walls first, you'll have uh, a big room filled with water. And then what you do then is you fill that glass box with some kind of material. I think I used wool. And then you break the wool, and then voila, you've got a room, underwater room, that's dry and doesn't have any water in it. So here's the creative mode potions room. So again, all the supplies you would need acquired in creative, including some basic helpful potions. This side is helpful potions, and this side is harming potions. So potion of harming, potions of weakness, and so on. And so there's our potions room. And then down here is the spa area. So you can see here we've got a swimming pool down here with a little gold spire that you can stand on and jump and do cannonballs and splash your friends with. And over there is an ink sack. This actually is open to the ocean. So you got ocean water streaming in from outside and then also the water dropping in from the elevator. And the cool, the fun thing about uh, uh, this being open to the ocean is sometimes uh, squids will get sucked in, and you'll find a squid in the pool. So clearly, this must have been a squid that died here or suffocated because uh, he left his ink sack. So let's go fly up now, real quick. So that's the only part of the boardwalk that was done in creative mode. Alright, so we're going to end episode 2 of Dad, uh, Minecraft Dad's build. And before I go, before we end this episode, let me switch back to point of view here. Before I go, I just want to let you know what I want to do with this series long term. Now the series is going to begin with a tour of me showing you around. But once I finish the tour, I want to open up uh, I, my reason for doing this is because I've once again gotten bored with the world and so I thought it would be fun for our view, viewing audience to vote or suggest to me what I should build next now we're not going to do that in this episode but uh, as, as, as the tour ends um, I will open it up to suggestions so that might be episode three or four maybe even as late as five, depending on how quickly I take you through the tour of my world. And then, after I've built some of your suggestions, I think what I would like to do, now notice I called this Minecraft Dads. Now, I didn't mean dads in the possessive, apostrophe S, but dads as in plural, dads, D-A-D-S, dads. What I'd like to do is make this map available to other Minecraft dads who are subscribers to this channel. We give them a copy of the map, which they can have for one month, and then have them send the map back to me, and I will take you on a tour of what they have contributed to this world. So, uh, what do they say if you love something? set it free and if it comes back to you it's yours well that's what I would like to do with this I'd like to set this map free and see what happens and see what kind of wonderful things that we can add to this world so we'll be talking about that as we go along but in the meantime thank you for joining me uh, and as always enjoy your own adventures enjoy ours with us or in this case me and until next time ciao in episode 3 we'll be continuing our adventure see you then Thank you.